big story, obviously, over the weekend uh, came from footage of there was a um, a big right to uh, life anti-abortion anti-choice rally this weekend in Washington D.C. and um, apparently one of the things that the uh, the folks who want to tell women what to do with their bodies uh, do and and look you know that's what this comes down to. There is no there is no middle ground here. And I understand that for uh, some people. The idea of abortion is icky. Uh, Frankly. The idea of any medical procedure I find icky. Okay. Um, Well, I just the idea of anything that involves almost the human body, I think I find uh, difficult, but. Uh, Aside from that, but the reality is this, you are either placing the uh, creating rights for a fetus that necessarily infringe upon the freedom of and the rights of women or you're not. That's it. There's no other equation. And you have to make that choice. So uh, one of the things that these uh, anti-abortionists do is they send down, and I don't want to play this one. I don't want to play this one first. What they do is they send busloads of kids from Catholic schools to juice their numbers. And uh, I'm sure that the majority of them, uh, you know, are, uh, are happy to restrict a woman's right to have sovereignty over her own body. Um, that's what they are told in their parochial schools. Do I have a problem with religious schools? Not, not necessarily. Although I think, look, when we talk about all the problems of religion, a lot of it is because they are, uh, it comes from fundamentalists of all stripes who are, um, who are educated in, no, I want to see the other one first. The educated in uh, these schools, whether it's, you know, madrasas or uh, yeshivas or uh, in these Catholic parochial schools. These are where the fundamentals of versions of religion are taught. And uh, a lot of secular ideas are excluded. Now, so apparently, um, and I've watched the entire two hour video. I skipped through. I went every 15 seconds to get to the parts where there was confrontations. But basically what happened is this. On the, uh, at the um, uh, Lincoln Memorial, there's these guys called the Black Israelites. And they basically get on a soapbox. And I imagine they do this every uh, Sunday. They do this all over. I mean, well, they they do it right here on Fulton. Yeah, they do it right here on Fulton. They do it. I remember twenty five years ago seeing them in Central Square in uh, in Cambridge. They have been doing this for a long time, and they dress in sort of um, uh, a combination of like there's there's a little bit of Holly Selassie involved, and there's uh, they consider themselves the real Jews, um, and uh, or Hebrews or Israelites. Israelites. Guess and who's coming to Seder? They, um, they often like will carry a big staff. Goddamn right. By that I mean a stick. And spacesuit looking brothers. Uh, I don't know if they still do it this way, but it used to be one guy would read scripture, and then the other guy would repeat the scripture and then give commentary. And it is uh, the gist of what they have to say is that uh, they are the true Israelites. Uh, white people are bad, and. Um, but they are largely harmless. Now, I imagine if you have never seen them before, you might be somewhat intimidated. There were four of these guys. I would also imagine, though, if you're with a hundred other guys, even if they're younger, the intimidation is less so. So what happened is these um, these uh, black Israelites were uh, doing their thing for like an hour because the video I saw was actually shot by one of them. They always used to shoot a videotape of themselves. Um, and then uh, these kids started to amass, 
and they started to trade barbs. And at one point, also at the Lincoln Memorial, were these um, uh, indigenous Americans who were um, who were basically doing a ceremony, and they tried to intercede by walking in between. It was about 20 feet, 30 feet. The kids were on the, um, on the steps and the, um, the black Israelites. And they would try to intercede by just simply going through and continuing to play their drums. And prior to this, the kids had already started to do like some of their, I would imagine were their sports cheers at their sports games, which are all about them being hulkish. One guy took his shirt off and led all of them. I mean, it's it's a little bit scary to see, um, you know, a hundred. Because I think there's about a hundred students there, right? At least uh, all guys cheering in unison as if they're some type of paramilitary. Um, we sure this the isn't the Gillette ad. Yeah, no kidding. But um, and uh, so the uh, the native elders uh, came through, started playing their drums, and the kids who apparently were not so brave and boisterous that they would get up in the face of the black Israelites had no problem doing this with an elderly uh, Vietnam War vet native. And here is here is clips. Now, the one that everybody's seen is the one with the with the guy who's got the smirk on his face staring at the. Uh, uh, but this is this is a little bit more telling about what went on there based upon my going through those two hours of video. Basically, you had like literally a hundred kids standing right in front of these guys, um, admonishing each other not to touch them, mocking them. And look, 15 year old boys in any context can be huge a holes. Um, and what they're doing is despicable. There, uh, I, I don't believe I've even heard an interpretation that they were somehow trying to join in and thought that they were involved in this, uh, uh, you know, uh, in, in what the elders were doing. It's despicable. But what's really despicable is that theoretically they have chaperones around there who are allowing this to happen. They have come from a culture where even their teachers at this school have no problem with them sitting there mocking this guy. No problem with it whatsoever. And that's, that's the issue here. I've seen 15 year old boys do all sorts of effed up things. But when you've got a hundred of them there who are on a school trip, and this behavior incidentally was not, confined to this moment here is apparently this is before somebody on twitter the covington catholic boys harassed my friends and i before the incident with nathan phillips even happened i'm tired of reading things saying they were provoked by anyone else other than their own egos and incident there's just about 20 seconds of video it is uh three girls walking by and like a, a dozen of these guys uh yelling at them I'm so tired already. Yeah, they're yelling MAGA and build the wall 
at the uh, right to life thing. Now, look, I would imagine if you're going to bring your students down, that is uh, to a protest based on your religious principles, that maybe, maybe if this was sort of a legit exercise in any way, you'd say, got to be respectful, guys. Incidentally, don't leer and harass women walking by and um, don't mock natives, elderly people who are uh, engaging in a uh, a drum session. I mean, the idea that these guys were either allowed to just wander around without chaperones, which I doubt is the case, or that the chaperones just sat back and watched this. And you and anybody wants to make an argument that they don't come from a a sick culture. It's one thing for kids to do this, but this is what happens when kids do this. They get punished or they're they're reprimanded by their teachers or by their parents. And that's how they learn not to do this. Right. Where were the fathers? Well, I mean, listen, honestly, let's just imagine that. This was a, uh, a Catholic priest, an elderly Catholic priest who was there, you know, saying, um, you know, Jesus says to da, 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 da. And a hundred black kids or Latino kids from a local school were sitting there going, Jesus said to do this, dancing around. I mean, can you imagine? I mean, can you imagine? First of all, the cops would be there. In about 30 seconds. 30 seconds. And right now, every news media outlet in the country would be interviewing the parents of all those kids. How could you let this happen? And I can assure you that none of those parents would have the funds to get a high-priced PR firm to justify what their kids were doing. So I, I think it's wrong to go out and single out these kids because uh, the ire should not be on the kids. It should be on the context, the parents, and the school that encourages this behavior by never reprimanding them for it. And by not putting, like, you know, you, the, the idea that you allow these 15-year-old kids to go out and do this suggests that this is nothing new in terms of like the hands-off nature of the chaperones. Well, they're wearing literal symbols of misogyny and white supremacy. I mean, from their perspective, it's not. But so, I mean, it I'm is, willing though. to, I understand. But from their perspective, it's not. But from their perspective, there's no way they can justify that behavior. Like, they can justify, we have a right to wear Make America Great hats. And they do. But there's no way they can justify the behavior, their actions. And it's... I would suggest it's not a coincidence that they were wearing those things. And it certainly makes the argument and it strengthens the argument that those things stand for racism and stand for misogyny. But from their perspective, they have no defense. They have no defense. It also implicates, you know, the type of person maybe who um, uh, write to lifers too. Definitely. Yeah. When you shout build a wall at a Native American it really lays bare the real meaning of that phrase. I don't know that they they yelled that to uh, the. I didn't. I haven't seen evidence of that. I saw evidence of them yelling it at uh, those girls, those young women who were walking by, and I don't know if that means maybe they showed more restraint. I listen. I'm just saying in terms of the evidence of what I've seen. I've watched two hours of tape, and. Uh, but what they were clearly doing is mocking these guys. They're doing tomahawk and, chop. And yeah, exactly. Stuff. Yeah, this is one where you don't need to add the extra. Like, we've got it. Right. <laughs> the and, tomahawk chop is sufficient. I mean, it's just simply, uh, you know, it's appalling in this day and age that you don't have teachers out there. Like, there's no video of the teachers going, guys, get back over there. Back on the bus. Get back on the bus. Walk over there. Walk away. There's none of that. How could that possibly be? How could that possibly be? And then you have to backfill that answer. Here is a clip of Phillips, Nathan Phillips, 
speaking about his experience there. Uh, it's conceivable, I guess. No, it's not conceivable uh, after you hear the guy speak uh, or you see the guy. But the idea that uh, he and two other guys his age were attacking and challenging these. Um, they were there to raise awareness for missing and m murdered indigenous women, uh, I think is what the protest is specifically about. So they weren't there to like even really protest. They're there to just, I guess, raise awareness raise for awareness. their issue. But the idea that the, their intent was in some way challenging. Look, the boys, to the extent that they were challenged by anybody, were by those black Israelites. And their bullying nature comes out when it's clear that they don't start getting aggressive and in anybody's face until uh, the the elderly uh, man comes up. I had put myself in a really dangerous situation, you know. It was like, here's a group of people who were angry at somebody else, and I put myself in front of that, and all of a sudden, I'm the one who's all that anger and all that wanting to have the freedom to just rip me apart you know that was scary that and and i i'm a vietnam times veteran and and i know that mentality of there's enough of us we can do this then Phillips describes the tense moments now being replayed over and over again online when a young man got right in his face. Watch. When I started going forward and that mass of groups of people started separating and, and, and separating and moving aside to allow me to move out of the way or to proceed, this young fella put himself in front of me and wouldn't move. And so I could, if I took another step, I would be putting my, my person into his presence, into his space, and I would have touched him. And that would have been the, the thing that the group of people would have needed to spring on me. I mean, you know, the, the idea that there is even, you know, that, that it's, what's, What's weird is that you don't even hear any of these people's like teachers or parents or whatnot saying like our kids acted poorly and we're going to um, punish them and explain to them exactly what they did. Right. Like that's all it would have taken. That's all it would have taken. But. Yeah, this is uh, this is this. <laughs> Those uh, Wisconsin school kids who um, who were, were given the Zeke Heil. And I don't know. People are digging up uh, stuff on these other kids about uh, the practices at the school. You don't need to. There's no way these kids show up in that situation, act that way. And all you need to do is see their parents' reaction. All you need to do is know the fact that there was no teachers or chaperones there who told them not to do this. You don't need to see anything else. Because that, that they don't they don't pop out of the womb like that, they get grown. They get raised like that, and again, if these fifteen year old kids were black or brown, the entire country right now would be having a a, a moment of like, what's wrong with the culture of black and brown uh, people that their parents don't care about the way these kids act? I mean, that's what we would be hearing. No, I see a hundred little Brett Kavanaugh's when I look at them, and it's horrifying. That's they, th That was one of the things when Brett Kavanaugh was just like, I'm allowed to get away with that at that age.